Let's finish off the walkthrough of the hands-on portion of the Desktop Certified Associate Exam Guide. Please make sure that you have your workbook ready and connected to the sample Superstore subset Excel file referenced by the exam guide. In part one of this video, we walk through questions four all the way to 10. In this video, we are going to finish this off and walk through questions 11 all the way to 15. Let's get started. Question number 11. Determine which state in the central region has the highest distribution of profits using interquartile ranges. So for this particular question, it looks like we're looking at a very specific region and we are looking to compare states based on highest distribution of profits. And usually when we're looking at distribution and interquartile ranges, that indicates that we need a box and whisker plot. So let's filter this by central region first. Let's take all of our states. The measure we're looking for is profit. So let's drag profit over. And instead of aggregated profit or the sum of profit, we actually want to see the spread of individual profit values. So in this case, we're gonna go to analysis and disaggregate the measure. And from here, we're just going to change the mark to a circle, make the size a little bit smaller or a lot smaller. And from the analytics tab, we can drag box plot. And in here, visually, we can already see that South Dakota has the biggest middle box, but we could also zoom into this if we go to worksheet, show view toolbar, and from here, instead of automatic, show on hover. So in here, we're just going to get a toolbar that allows us to zoom in. Let's zoom into this one area right here. So now the differences are a little bit more magnified. So the answer to this question should be South Dakota. And that's letter A. Question number 12. Look at the sum of profits for each product subcategory. Which subcategory is $31,069 below the average profit across all categories? In a previous question, question number eight, we created a calculated field for overall average profit. We can use this calculated field for question number 12. So we're going to create another calculated field that gives us the difference. So let's call this difference from overall average profit. And this will be our profit. And this is going to be for a specific subcategory minus overall average profit. Let's drag all of our product subcategories over. We're going to find the difference and in here sort the difference. I'll copy over the difference both to color and to label and also add a filter to the difference because we're only looking for something very specific. So it's minus 30,000. And in here we can find the minus 31,000 for envelopes. Answer for number 12 is letter C. Question number 13. What percent of the total profit do the top 10 customers by sales represent? There's a couple ways we could tackle this and I'll show you both ways. In here, we are looking for the top 10 customers and we're also looking at percent of total. Percent of total, quick table calculation. Top 10 customers we can get by either ranking or using sets. Instead of a pie chart, this time I'm just going to use a 100% stack bar chart. Both will be able to help us answer this question. So in this case, let's start by creating a set from our customer ID, create set, and we want the top 10 customers by sales. So under the top tab, top 10 customers, make sure this is by sales and make sure that this is sum of sales right here. Click OK. We are looking at the measure profit, drag profit over, add a quick table calculation for percent of total. And in here, I'm just going to set this to fit entire view. Let's drag the field with quick table calculation onto label so we can kind of see what that number is. And then take our set, put that in color, 
And in here we can see that our top 10 customers by sales represent 5.03% of our total profit. Another way we can do it, which is a longer way, but provides a little bit more insight, will be to take our customer IDs. We're looking at top 10 sales, so let's grab sales first. Let's sort this. And then from here, I actually just want to have a field that ranks the customers. So I'm gonna copy over sales and add a rank quick table calculation. So in here, we have quick table calculation, rank. I'm gonna put that right beside customer ID and change this to discrete so we can see the ranking right there. And then we can take profit, make that into a, another bar. And in here, we can see the profit that was made by our top customers. But what we need to do is to have a running total. We need to keep on adding all of these profits. So from here, quick table calculation, it's going to be a running total. But this is not enough to answer our question. We want to know what is the percent of total. With quick table calculations, we can add secondary calculations. We can go to the edit calculation. And from here, we can add a secondary calculation. Secondary calculation type has to be percent of total, and it's going to be table down instead of table across. And from here, I'm going to add the label for the percent of total. And let's change the formatting so we can see at least two decimal places. So from here, percentage, two decimal places. So an interesting thing here is our top nine customers by sales contribute to 5.07% of our profit. But when we reach our 10th customer, it looks like this has dropped down. So from 5.07%, it has become 5.03%, which tells us we've actually lost money from our 10th customer. So the answer to question number 13 is letter B. If you are finding these videos useful so far, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Question number 14. What was the moving average of sales in June of 2012, including six months prior and six months after? We can create a time series graph. Let's right click drag order date. And from here, choose continuous month. Let's put sales. We can add quick table calculation on sales. We can choose moving average. The default moving average only considers previous two points and next zero along table across. So we can change this, click on the drop down on some of sales, let's edit the table calculation. And from here, we are going to change this to previous six values and next six values. So make sure you have these two values change. And to make it a little bit easier to find June 2012, I'm going to go to the analytics tab. I'm going to drag a constant line and we need to make sure that we drop this on the month of order date. And in here, we're looking at 2012 and it's the month of June, which is six. Once we have this in place, we can see the value. It's 188,552. The answer to question number 14 is letter C. Question number 15. Create a histogram showing the number of sales using sales bins of $1,000. Which bins have profit ratios, or profit as a percentage of sales, of more than 25%? Select all that apply. In a previous question, question number 10, we have created a calculated field called profit ratio. And this is the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales. We're going to reuse this calculated field in question number 15. In this question, we are asked to create a histogram, and this is going to be an equal sized histogram, bin size being $1,000 equally across the board. And this suggests we can use a built-in feature in Tableau that allows us to create equal sized bins. Let's right click on sales, create bin, there is a suggested bin size of $1,800. We're gonna change this. We're going to set this to $1,000. This creates a sales bin discrete field. We're gonna drag that to columns. And we are going to take our profit ratio, drag that to rows. We are also going to set the fit to entire view. And from here, we can add a filter to the profit ratio, show filter. And in here, we really just want to take a look at anything that is more than 25%. So the minimum value that we can put in here is 0 
I'm also just going to copy profit ratio, so control drag profit ratio onto label so that we can see the actual values and verify it visually. So we have four bins that match the criteria, 7,000, 8,000, 11,000, and 18,000. So for question number 15, it's letter C for 7,000, D for 8,000, F for 11,000, and G for 18,000. Those are all the hands-on questions for the Certified Associate Exam Guide. I hope you found it useful. I hope you were able to find new strategies to use, not just for your certification preparation, but also for anything else that you're doing in Tableau. If you have any suggestions on additional topics you want to see in this channel, please leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.